Microsoft was founded in 1975, when Bill Gates and Paul Allen wrote a basic compiler, the Altair 8800, the first commercially successful personal computer that kickstarted the microcomputer revolution. What if you could own a piece of this history? On today's show, I'm joined by Dave, an Internet of Things and embedded hardware enthusiast from Australia, who has built a pocket-sized Altair 8800, a piece of computing history in the palm of your hand. This device adds modern computing technology to the blinking lights and switches of the original and is a great device for learning the fundamentals of computer science. With it, you can discover how processors work, the fundamentals of assembly language, and see how to code for a constrained device from almost 50 years ago. And the best part is, you can build this at home. Let's get personal computing with Dave Glover. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Hey, really good, Jim. Good to be here. Thank you. Welcome to the Microsoft Reactor in, in Redmond. Yeah, and, thank and you. I, I know the Reactor in Sydney is probably closer to your stomping ground than here. But it is. But thank it you is, for joining me on this side of the world. It's been a long trip to get here, but it's great fun to be here. Awesome. Now, Microsoft, many, many years ago, we're talking 45 odd years ago, they started with this. This is what they first wrote BASIC for, you know, BASIC on like paper yeah. tape. And you've taken one of these and you've rebuilt it using yeah. modern tech. Tell me all about this. This is, is this? It is. And just, just to kind of add a bit about the Altair, the Altair was really the, the computer that kind of kicked off um, the computer revolution, the personal computer revolution. So it was really kind of fundamental. Um, Intel came out with their second generation, what was it the Intel 8080? Yeah. And that was kind of like one of the first general purpose integrated circuits. And that was what the Altair was built on. So this is built on kind of the basic Intel chip that then went on to the 286, 386, like the 486 that we yeah, got exactly. next to you there, yeah. on to then the modern PC. Yeah. And interesting enough, it was also um, Altair Basic, which was written by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. It was Microsoft's first product. Literally the entire company. Exactly. And the rest is history. So that wow. was really the, the fundamental. So they kind of saw it, grasped the idea, and then kind of built it. So that's kind of a bit of the history about the Altair. And what we did is that I kind of got involved in working with the Azure Sphere team. So I do a lot of IoT work. Azure Sphere? Uh, so Azure Sphere is like an IoT platform. Right. And um, what we wanted to do is build a project which is kind of sufficiently complex um, to kind of push the boundaries of Azure Sphere and kind of see where it broke. That was kind of that was kind of fundamentally what we're trying to do. And and yes, things did break, but we kind of fixed them on the way. So and we kind of fixed them on the way. So it's been an absolutely fascinating project to work on. And the the real thing about it that I kind of always like to draw people back to the power of the open source community, mm. because without the open source community and the retro computing, this project would not have been uh, possible. And kind of at the fundamental layer there is a, an Intel 8080 um, emulator in software. So the chip that's in here, what yep. you've done is you've taken that chip from there and you've emulated that on... That's running this, on... This is the Azure Sphere board here. So on here, you've got an emulator. Yep. So that, that process. So there's a software emulator of the Intel 8080 chip. Wow. And um, so it's got all the instructions and, and they had like in the order of about 78 instructions. Okay. So it was a nice, simple, uh, was a much simpler, of course, set of CPU instructions back then than obviously today, which is also one of the beauties of it because it makes it really easy to kind of understand what the CPU is doing. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, that kind of makes it kind of an interesting project as well. So when you're running the emulator on here, because you've got those kind of small set of instructions, people actually, if they're coding against this, they can actually learn about those instructions. Yeah, so nice. so nice. for me, one of the beauties of this project, and I've been in the IT industry forever, really, <laughs> and the beauty of this is I was learning things. I, was like, I never realized that's how a CPU worked or how the CPU integrated with peripherals and things like that. Um, so I learned a lot about you know CPU IO ports and how to get data into the CPU and out of the CPU and things like that. So really, really neat way uh, to kind of learn about the fundamentals of computing technology. So that was kind so of one of the right down dirty with all the little things that you don't really learn about these days because we have so many abstractions. Exactly. You have the processor, but you have the operating system that doesn't let you talk to the processor. And you yeah. have all these different language abstractions until you're writing like a bit of Python code. Yeah, exactly. Really, you kind of peeled away all those layers. And you get the right down. and you get the fundamental CPU. And and the beauty of it, and, and just to show the kind of like the the fidelity of it, is I'm actually running binaries on top of it. So I'm running Intel 8080 binaries because a lot of this code that was from the 70s and 80s doesn't exist in source code anymore. There's just the binaries. So for example, on the Intel 8080, I can run the, the original Altair Basic, which was what Bill Gates and Paul Allen wrote. So that was the, this is, we've got it here. Yeah. This is literally, this is the original Basic in paper tape form. 
Yeah. So, so it, you've taken, you've, you've rather than run this whole real paper tape through here, which obviously you can't do, you've taken the binary build of this. Exactly. Put it on there. Yep. And it will run against that Intel CPU. So it's really kind of neat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's incredible. Now, the way that I really love to run this is I normally run an operating system called CPM. And again, the CPM operating system I have, I don't have the source code for it. I'm not even sure it exists anymore. <laughs> um, but I do have the binary. And so the binary, what happens is that you load it up off the file system. So you load the CPM into, into memory, and then you tell the CPU to say, jump to the operating system. And then the operating system starts up. And voila, That's you're running crazy. and you're running this operating system from the 1970s and 1980s. And then on top of that, so once you've got CPM, so a lot of, I don't know, have you ever played on with CPM? No, no, it's a little bit before my time. A little bit, a little it bit is in, in fairness, <laughs> touching just before my time as well. Um, but it was a precursor to DOS. Yeah. Um, and it was, there was a kind of the time, there was a, was I think, as the industry going to go CPM, was it going to go DOS and kind of DOS, DOS one out at the time. And um, so then you, uh, where does it go with that? You can, you can kind of bring up the operating system. And then on top of that, um, because I'm a developer, it had to have compilers. Yeah. And um, if, you, if you do look at it, you might think, geez, Dave, there's a lot of compiler technology in here. And I just loved looking at the, um, uh, there's a C compiler on this, one of the original C compilers. Um, and there is a, an assembler. I'd never really done any assembler. I'd done a little bit of assembler years ago. Um, but it was really fun to go through the, Fun in a kind of geeky way. Um, <laughs> fun for us. Fun, fun, fun for us. For us. Yeah. It was uh, really interesting to go through the Intel 8080 um, instruction set and figure out how to go and write that in assembler and write, write some very simple routines in assembler. And then what I really loved about it was, of course, the Intel 8080 and CPM and the Altair was born way before the internet. Um, really kind of existed in the, in the form it does today. And then what I was able to do um, through various mechanisms with the CPU is I was able to hook in and kind of infuse modern internet cloud technologies. And so, and so what I've done... So you got basically this connected to the cloud? Yeah. Wow. And so what I do is I connect, I connect it up to IoT Central and mm -hmm. I can stream, and it, it's kind of got a weather, a climate change scenario behind it. So I, I get data from Open Weather Map, so you can get free um, weather data and pollution data. And I bring that in, and then through various mechanisms on the CPU and all the source code there exists for this project, I can get all that weather data um, really up into the operating system and then and make that available to um, Altair Basic, which was written, what? Um, 40 to almost 50 years ago. So you've got 50-year-old basic code running on a modern device yep. which connects to the cloud, yep. gets all this climate data, and then you can run code against it using 50-year-old code. Exactly. That's just bananas. Yeah. That's absolutely bananas. And that really is the power. And, and when you start looking at how the heck did he do that, it's all about um, Intel IO, uh, the Intel 8080 um, I.O. ports, and you can kind of drill down and you can say, um, a particular port number, I want to make that for the temperature or the pressure or things like that. Right. Now, the way that I.O. ports were really kind of originally used, they were used to kind of drive um, things like the paper tape readers. Right, because like on the back of here is like a serial port connector, so it's got exactly. a similar thing to that. You can yeah. put something in to be like a tape reader or... Yeah, you know, and whatever. I kind of emulate peripherals, but the peripheral is the cloud in this so, case. So almost like this, these holes here, yeah. come through here, this it will be your cloud data. Exactly, yeah. So you provide a really interesting way of being able to get data actually into the Altair. So it's that, just, it's just absolutely bananas. <laughs> it's so cool. So it's a, it's a really neat project. And, and, and the kind of the other things, if you, if you are interested in kind of retro technology or computing technology or, or your, well, you've got your Sinclair <laughs> on there, um, the other thing about it, I really loved this project. And there was a lot of work went into it to think about how you go and build a modern IoT application. So fundamentally underpinning all this is a, um, a multi-threaded event-driven application. And if you if you looking at the world of IoT and you want to say, well, how do I go and build a, uh, an IoT application which uses minimum resources? So uh, in this scenario here, I've got around about 200 kilobytes of RAM wow. to go and run the whole of the Altair, uh, provide the address space for the Altair. So I provide a 64K address space for the Altair to run in. Uh, then plus I'm also doing all the cloud connectivity. So I've got to be able to do that within that memory space as well provide all these IO ports to be able to connect to Open Weather Map and to Azure and all those types of things. And you've got to do it in a really tiny memory footprint. 
And so that, so a lot of the things, if you're interested in IoT technology, you'll learn um, if you start unpicking this project and thinking, what did he do about all this? And the other really neat thing about this is that, sure, I'm showing this running on an Azure Sphere, um, but this project also runs across um, uh, Raspberry Pis. If you can get one. If you can get a Raspberry <laughs> Pi. Um, Fantastic and, computers, impossible to get one. Exactly, it's a yeah. bit of a shame, now, unless you're prepared to pay. Yeah. Um, but you can also run it on your desktop. So you can emulate this without without needing this hardware. You exactly. Can emulate it running on Windows. Yep. You can run it on Mac OS, and nice. I, I've I've written it and tested it on my uh, Apple Silicon on my Intel Mac. Nice. Um, it runs beautifully on Linux and on Windows. I use WSL, so Windows Subsystem for Linux. And the really cool thing about it, it's the same code base. So it's the same code base all the way from the microcontroller, where you've got really limited resources, uh, and it scales up to your desktop. And you can run the same thing. And in fact, the really the cool thing about this project was I originally wrote it for the microcontroller. I re that, was, that was a pl platform I originally built it on. And then I decided, heck, I want to make this more general, generally available because it's really cool technology. And the reality is that everyone's got a desktop computer and not everybody wants to play around with hardware. So I kind of ported the code across to my desktop. And then the beauty of that was I could kind of innovate on this a lot more. So I did a lot more of the work around cloud connectivity using the desktop version. And then what I did is I backported it back to the microcontroller. Nice. So that's kind of how I built the project. And then, uh, so the second version of this project is way richer in terms of its cloud connectivity and things like that. Okay, so Jim, what I want to show you is the wiki. So on the wiki, you're going to find all the documentation and all the source code. So everything I need to recreate this. Exactly. Is there. You're going nice. to find there. So you'll find it's completely documented. Oops. And if I just scroll through here, you'll find uh, the project, as I mentioned, has got a climate theme focus. Um, so you can grab data from Open Weather Map. And we've also got um, the ability to go and do AI work. So if you're interested in things like anomaly detection, uh, you can you can start playing around with that as well. There's documentation examples in there. So you can take weather data from the cloud, yep. modern technology, put it onto a device running, emulating a 50-year-old processor with 50-year-old technology, yep. and then you use that for AI. Exactly. So bringing together this classic hardware yep. with modern AI. Exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. I love it. I love so it's it. really neat. So, so, and there's sample code for how to do all this. In fact, you can even write that whole scenario in assembler if you really want to go and do that. <laughs> if you if you really, <laughs> if you're that way inclined. If you're that way inclined. Yeah. And of course, what I didn't talk about too much was retro computing. Now, I've got a funny feeling, Jim, with that shirt on, that you are a bit of a retro. I, I mean, I, yeah. I may be a fan of the, of the spectrum. Yes. Yeah. And this was the classic game of Star Trek, mm. and they're not quite as maybe as engaging games as they are nowadays. Um, but look, Star Trek. That is no Xbox, really, is it? There's no the, Xbox. The on there. But you can kind of have a bit of fun and you kind of get to learn about it. And the really cool thing about it, of course, is nothing to stop you going writing your own games. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that again. Nice. Um, we'll just scroll through here a bit more. Now, uh, you, the example that we're seeing on the desktop here, that's running on Azure Sphere. So I mentioned before that you can run it on Raspberry Pi and you can run it on your Mac or your Linux or Windows desktop. Um, so you can see here it's running on the Raspberry Pi. And I use just off the shelf computer. Components. So if you want to, and if you have one, if you can get hold of one, um, this has got a Pi Sense hat on it. It's the and LED display of Sense hat, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And you, on here, you can see the address bus and the, and the data bus. But you can also flip the uh, the LED panel into um, into character mode. And you can start writing characters on there and having fun with Scrolling fonts. Text and, across it, things like yeah, that. Yeah, and also nice. bitmaps. So if you want to go and create a game with an accelerometer or some of that and build a game, of, I don't know, uh, Pac-Man or something like that. Um, using the LED screen, you can also do that. Um, and you can see this is the, uh, the Azure Sphere device. So and that's the same hardware that we've got on the desk here. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that's the original Altair. And, and just in here, I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but this is kind of the overall architecture of the solution. Uh, so you remember I'm, I said at the heart of the solution here is the Intel 8080 uh, emulator. Yep. And we've got what I call a CPU monitor you can find that at Mel about the documentation. I'm running CPM, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can go and write basic C and assemble applications, and you go and build custom applications. Nice. And it's all documented. What does all the layers do? How do they work? Uh, how do they work together? All the way to learning about I/O ports. And you'll see there's a stack of information here about, hey, look, I want to get to port 34. Um, that's going to give me the temperature in Celsius. It's, right. uh, you can kind of get that. So that's the port you go and call. Nice. And if I just go back over here, and of course, if you want to get um, have some fun with software development, you'll see, ah, for example, here, um, go into Assembler. 
assembly. Electrical uh, instructions then how to write assembly. Exactly. And you'll see that there is a, a very simple example in there about um, how to go and what's this one doing here? This is, um, it's going to write hello world. So that's uh, the hello world. Exactly, in assembly. And in if we go down a bit further down here, this one here um, actually writes data um, to IIT Central. So uh, that's the assembly code yeah. for an Intel 8080 50-year-old processor to send data through this up to the cloud. Exactly. Yep. And Genius. That's brilliant. And this will work on, you don't need special hardware. You can run this on, again, your desktop computer or a Raspberry Pi on Azure Sphere. So, but you can buy this hardware if you wanted this. Ah, no, good point. Um, so this hardware, um, it's that hardware is actually, um, it's open source for hardware. Open source hardware. Yeah, okay. open source hardware. Um, so on the wiki, you'll get pointed to if you want to go and build your own front panel. Now, I do appreciate that not everyone's going to do that. Um, so that's why I wanted to make sure that you could use kind of off the shelf pieces. So like the PySense hat or uh, Micro Electronica build um, click, what they call click boards. And you can plug those onto the, uh, in fact, I've got an example of it up here. Uh, if we just go back to the home screen, um, oh, going, am I going the right way? Yeah, so if I look over here, um, this one here, these are off-the-shelf components if you want to go and build that. So these are called clicks. So literally, you've got the switches, the buttons, you've got the LEDs, you've got LEDs there. And so you've got different ways of actually building this hardware using... Yeah, and that's really wow. just if like if you're super enthusiastic and say I really want to go and build one of these front panels, the complete um, implementation how to go and build that is is up on the up on the web. So that's really that, really nice. That's amazing. This is so cool. So let's just say we've Microsoft started with this. Yep. We've gone full circle to bring it back around to this. This is great. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this with me. This is absolutely brilliant. I, I love this project so much. Thank you for joining me here at the Microsoft. Absolute Reactor. pleasure. It's really great to be able to shout off. Thanks. Thanks a lot. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.